Welcome to the first lecture on the slob defense. The slob defense is actually a variation of the Queen's Gambit, ga Queen's Gambit declined. And uh, just to review that, uh, Queen's Gambit declined is, uh, well, Queen's Gambit is d4, d5, white plays c4. And I've already discussed where uh, black takes the pawn and then a whole bunch of variations like the Lasker defense and the Orthodox defense of the Queen's Gambit decline where uh, black starts by playing e6. And now I want to discuss where black plays c6. And maybe we should ask ourselves why did black play c6? Well, if I just take back that move, normally black plays this e6 move and what it does, well, a couple things it does is one, it sort of uh, traps this bishop, meaning now this bishop cannot get out. So it's sort of stuck there. So that's one of the drawbacks of the orthodox or the um, line or the variations that start with the queen's gambit declined of e6. Also, we know that um, black is probably going to play the uh, knight here and then White will play the bishop here, and that there'll be a pin that uh, black will have to um, uh, get rid of, usually by moving this um, bishop here. Now, a bunch of lines on the board, but those are the basic drawbacks of the plain e6. So to um, get away from that, black plays c6. And now this bishop here is free to develop. And if black develops the knight, um, white cannot pin it. So sort of a useless move. So what is the continuation of the Slav defense? Well, let me start by sort of um, covering the one that's probably going to lead, if you play it, to a lot of draws. It is a possibility right away to, for white to take this and then black just recaptures. This is called the exchange variation. Usually this does not occur on the third move. It can, but it usually doesn't. Usually um, white will play knight f3. Maybe I should just discuss this move. Is um, White here is playing to really to stop e5. Now you're saying, well hold on, can uh, in the last uh, set of moves, or the last um, um, the queen's gambit decline on e6, um, white played c3. Well, believe it or not, um, whoops, um, white in this case could played, could have played knight to c3 instead of knight to f3, and we usually get to the same position on the board. That's one of the interesting things about the queen's gambit declined is you can reach the same position by uh, various combinations of move. So, as we'll find out, that um, sometimes one knight will develop before the other one, and and most likely the the in position will be the same. That's called, um, in chess, it's called transposition. So here, though, white is developing the knight, mainly to stop e5. That's one of the goals of black, is to play e5, and one of the goals of uh, I'm sorry, one of the goals of black is to play e5, and one of the goals of white is to actually get e4 in. But here, um, white develops the knight to um, f3, developing the knight, helping the control, you know, these two squares, preventing e5, even though it wasn't really in danger of playing e5. Um, and then black usually will play knight f6, developing, helping control the center, and definitely preventing now, white can definitely not now play um, e4. And then, um, just to talk about the Slav exchange, and this is the line I'm now talking about. So in this lecture I'm covering sort of the basics of the Slav and the exchange variation. In the next lecture I'll probably cover two other lines. So what happens, um, or what are White's choices now. Well, as I've mentioned, the, the, main, the main choices are uh, for for White 
are th uh, three basic ones. Can uh, can exchange. It can. That's called the exchange variation. It can develop the knight to c3, the sort of what we call the main line. Then can play e3, which is sort of usually called the slob. Slav defense declined, and I just want to cover the exchange variation. So what happens when we exchange? So let's exchange. So white will take, and then black will take back. Maybe I should just stop and say, um, why did white take? Well, um, basically, the the position that's going to happen is it's going to be very symmetrical. If you don't know, symmetrical positions usually lead to a draw. That's the case with the exchange variation. It's probably the most straightforward. And what white is really banking on is that um, later on it's going to have the extra move and hopefully can utilize this extra move. That's really white's strategical decision is to say, I can exchange, exchange everything off, and hopefully my one move advantage will be enough to win. But usually in practice, uh, usually in among the top level players, it's a draw. So then what will happen after the pawns are exchanged is white will develop the knight to uh, c3. And now um, black is free to develop the knight to c6 because the pawns have been exchanged off. And then uh, white will develop the... the um, the bishop to f4. Now g5, which normally happens with the queen's gambit decline, uh, you know, to here, that uh, doesn't make a lot of sense because it really, you know, white really can't pin anything. So the most useful square is uh, f4. Also, somewhat there's a, you know, always maybe some type of knight can move here, threatening to come here. And in the sort of fork and king and rook. Bishop to, now bishop to, uh, black will play bishop to f5. Sort of a very symmetrical type of development. In fact, the, the position, position is exactly symmetrical. White will play e3. And now black will play e6. Maybe I should say, why is uh, white playing e3? Uh, well, it's going to free this bishop here and help support d4. And it wants to, uh, because if you think about it, white wants to get that bishop, this bishop developed so it can castle. And black follows the same plan. e6 to free this bishop so it can later castle. And then uh, white will play bishop to d3. You're thinking, well, where can this knight, uh, this bishop, really go? I mean, moving the bishop, the white bishop to here is somewhat passive. Uh, you can say, well, maybe it can develop to here to uh, pin, but then not not really doing anything personally. So uh, basically, the bishops are going to be traded off when white moves its bishop to uh, d3. So black will take, the queen will take back, and now black sort of follows the same type of plan. Bishop to d6, and the bishops are exchanged off, and then each side will castle. Remember I said before that the position would be very symmetrical, and uh, the, only th the only advantage, in fact it's exactly symmetrical, the only advantage here is though is white is on move and has a move advantage. And then from here, there's a variety of plans that can be employed. But like I said, in general practice, this game ends up being a draw. So uh, I'll, t I'll tell you what: if you're if you're um, if you're black, you don't want to see the exchange variation if you're looking for a win, because uh, uh, it's going to probably lead to a draw. So I'll cover the next two main variations of the Slav in my next lecture.